and I thought, why not do a video? Because I couldn't decide what I wanted to write about today. There it is. Hey there, it's Stacy Budge Camison with Urban Gypsy, and I was having a little bit of writer's block today. Right now, every my brain is filled with uh, leaving town uh, early next week for the holidays and pulling everything together, including my travel knits. <laughs> I can't just have one project when I travel. Evidently, I need at least three. So, um, I know last week I said that I was going to, to warp my loom for the Alabama game. Didn't happen. Yeah, I got distracted. So, I decided, you know what, I'm going to definitely want to warp my loom to take with me. And I thought I would share with you guys how I picked my warp. Um, so, here we have it. All right, so here's how I go through this process. First of all, don't overthink it. The warp, when you're, you're creating a woven fabric, the warp makes up, um, if you're weaving with an even tension, the warp's going to make up half of, um, of the colors and the textures of your weaving in any given part of whatever you're weaving. Using a surprising combination of, of warp threads kind of adds some interest uh, to, to, your, to your weft. If I put more contrast in the warp, it's going to really, really show up um, as nice patterning in, in the weft. So I've been playing a lot with that, trying to not overthink it too much um, and, and to, to be um, just to kind of approach it with a wait and see what happens kind of thing. In particular, I also have a ton of, of remnant little pieces of sock yarn. A lot of this comes from when I would um, when I would ball up, a lot of this would come from when I was dyeing pounds of yarn at, at a time and then scanning it after I dyed it and I would end up with these little bits. And that's what, um, what I was making my, my uh, mini skeins with. But unfortunately, the labor involved in making the mini skeins just was, was more than I could charge for it. So that's why I don't have those anymore. But I've been using the heck out of this stuff as a warp for my weaving. So I've got a bunch of these. So I want to try and use up some of this, that. And I also have some of this fun fur. Now fun fur I, I'm, I understand is, is kind of hard to find these days. It's fallen out of fashion. Um, but, and it's not necessarily something I would buy. This, this stuff I happen to have on hand um, from when I worked at Lark and we did the Michael's book of um, needlework and we had gotten a bunch of, of yarn from them and a lot of it was this fun fur stuff. So I think this, this I think came from Target though. So anyway, so I have all this fun fur, um, which I don't like to generally knit with except for interesting little details. It, it adds a nice little texture. So I've been using one or two strands of fun fur in my weaving because it adds a little bit of dimension. So this time, I think I'm going to pick out this crazy purple stuff. It has a little bit of sparkle in it, and um, and when it's like a strand or two, it's not it's not overwhelming. It's not too terrible. So I'm going to go start with this yarn, and then again, not overthinking it too much. I'm going to pick out a little bit of yarn from this um from this stash right here of, of these these uh, little balls of yarn that I'm trying to use up. This has some purple in it and it has some olive greens. This used to be my uh, leaf autumn leaf study colorway. So I'm going to pair these together. It's not exactly a match, but I think it's going to be okay. So I'm picking up just a little bit of purple here. And then I also might add, this is a koigu yarn and it's kind of a grayish texture with just a little bit of color in it. And I think that's, you know, you know, when you look at these yarns, they're, they're not really matching, but when I put it in the warp, I think it's going to be okay. What I also have is this bin. This bin is, is, this is my sock yarn stash, you know, and I've got things like, you know, some Noro. I love me some Noro. And then I've got, you know, old colorways that, um, and old yarn bases that I don't carry anymore. You know, and I might try this with this. This is my koi pond on my old single base that wasn't that wasn't um, super washed. So I'm gonna add those. 
I might take this. No, I'm going to keep that in there. I don't know. We'll see what happens when it comes down to it. And then I'm going to throw in maybe... Here's a brown that I have. I'll probably throw that in now. I like that combo. Actually, I'm going to take this out. So you can see I've got this combo here, this brown. So I've got this, this brown, this fun fur, this kind of lighter color, and then this, this uh, old colorway that has a lot of different colors. So right now what I'm going for, you can tell I've got a couple, three kind of solidish looking yarns, and then I have one that's going to pop out kind of variegated. And I'm also trying to go with different tones. You can see that this is a lighter color. This is also going to pop out and read as lighter. And these are going to, this is going to read as darker. And this is going to read more neutral. So I want to pick another yarn maybe to throw in there. So I'll have five. Um, and go with something that's going to be more in this kind of neutral range. Now maybe, where's that yarn I just put back? And it might be that this is it. I'm going to put this back in there. But I'm going to also look and see because there might be something else that I want to pop into that kind of neutralish range. And I think I want to go with something, again, variegated so I get this because the three solids, um, I don't want to put another solid in there. I think I want to add another variegated texture. So if I don't go for this Koi Pond one, let's see, I've got another, now this is interesting, uh, that blue, I don't like the blues with that, I might go with, uh, you know, this might work, yeah, now look at that, I kind of am digging that, okay, so I've got this somewhat bright orange, this is, I think, I have something like this in my, uh, in, uh, in the shop now, this is scrambled eggs or stay golden. I think this is stay golden. Yeah, this is stay golden. Okay, so so then I've got you know this is coming out a little brighter than this, but somewhat somewhat similar in the tones in some of this area. And even though this is a monochromatic, oh, you know what? I keep adding this back in here, so maybe it's going to be six colors. All right. So I think this is what I'm going to go with. And if you can see, you can see they don't necessarily, I don't know that I would necessarily knit these together. Um, but when you're weaving, you're going to, when the weft threads are going to kind of add a common element in blending these colors to look together. Now again, what I was going for was having a little variation between the values. So I'm going from, you know, very light to dark. And then had, you know, this is going to pop out a little colorful. And I like this because this on, this might read strong, but it's in contrast to this. So I think that's going to that's going to work nicely together. So anyway, so this is what I'm going to warp my loom with. So that's what I'm working on. I'm getting my loom ready to take on my trip. And I might bring maybe two other projects just because I'm a project hoe when it comes to travel knits. I'm Stacy Budge Camison with Urban Gypsy, and I will talk to you guys later.